Welcome to my little video on the MLD Monk Tart. Now I used this quite a long time ago and I kind of haven't, haven't used it for a long time, but we still have it. We haven't sold it. And I've been using it now for the last three nights and it's given me, you know, a great deal of comfort and protection. I pitched sort of four tie out points to the ground. There's no real reason why I did that one and not that one. I think it's because my head was there. So I kind of just wanted that one, you know, more secure. I could have done dumb, dumb. It just kind of worked out that I did it that way. I pitched the corners to the ground. Now, maybe you're supposed to use bungee cord. I'm not sure, but anyway, um, I just, I had a line already on here from years ago. So I thought, okay, it's still there. So basically I ran a line up to a pole and then two lines down to secure the pole. And then that just brought this bit here away from my head. And then I didn't use this one here. Now, the logo is printed here. Now, normally on a tap, uh, you, you tend to pitch them in an A-frame format. So you would have the front pitched up high and then the sides down in a conventional A-frame. You can certainly do that with this tap and we'll have a look at that in a minute. But obviously the logo being here kind of indicates that this tap is primarily aimed at being this type of shape here. Now, when I got here the other day, the wind was a northerly breeze coming in this way or northeasterly. So what I did, I pitched this corner here quite low to the ground, and then obviously just pegged that one down just to secure it. But because the breeze was, when I got here, coming in this direction, and my head was going to be here, I used a very long line on this corner here. I don't know how long this line is, but it's, <laughs> it's ridiculously long. It comes back to here. So it's, it's maybe about three or three and a half meters or more. And of course, if you can use a very long line on a corner, that helps to you know, raise that, that corner up. So you've got plenty of of headroom under there. In this configuration, if I come under here, bear in mind that I'm obviously, you know, about five foot eight. And if I'm lying down here, you know, my arm is stretched out and I'm not touching the seam there. And my feet are well inside the end there. Obviously, because I've got this grassy stuff all around it's giving protection there as well so one question that i did have and it's kind of what made me kind of i kind of forgotten that i had this tat because i love the grace duo and the gray solo or the super tat and i'd kind of forgotten that i had this one and then i got the poncho and obviously i was using the pro poncho a lot and someone posted a comment, is there a difference or any advantage between the poncho and, and the monk? The only real difference, well, there, there's two differences between the poncho and, and the monk. They're both nine feet long. So length, they're both the same. The poncho is, I think, five and a half feet wide, and this is five feet wide. So in other words, the poncho is a little bit wider than this, but you know, only by, <laughs> only by about six inches, if that. The other difference, obviously, the monk tap has these line locks on it, and the tap, has loops so you have to put your own lines on and then obviously your own knots on or or your own line locks you know that you would put attached to the line itself with this one you get one two three line locks on the width and then you get 
obviously this one is we're counting this one again one two three four five on the length of it so you get a lot of you know a lot of tying out options you've obviously got your four corners one on the width and three along the edges and then you have two loops in the middle of it which you probably should use bungee cord but like i said i didn't and inside you have one hanging clip there and one over there and the only seam sealing that i did on this which i would have done a long time ago would have been here and here i, I guess it's possible that maybe it would be worth sealing here here and there i've not really had this in so much rain so it's difficult to say but it might be worth doing doing these i'm just thinking that if you've got it pitched like this and it's raining rain could potentially go through the seam and then run down the inside on you so it might very well be worth just doing you know some of those just for an added security to your south but i can't say whether they leak or not they probably don't so you can see this is the configuration that we've got here now so what i'm going to do is now i'm going to take this pole out i'm going to undo this line here and the wind has actually changed direction so what we'll do is we'll change the configuration from this very open front into an a but pitched quite close to the ground because the wind is now blowing directly towards us and we'll kind of see what it's like inside we'll take that one off as well so imagine it's hammering it down with rain and you want to keep your stuff underneath as dry as possible and this is the beauty of of having different lines so we can just switch so what I would suggest you do is that you just loosen off that corner and obviously, you know, assuming that you've got important things still underneath, this line that was long, just shorten it off because you don't want to suddenly this blow up and for everything inside, you know, to get soaked. And then of course that line that you took off, that one around here, so you're really only switching out two lines and then maybe just get your peg and just secure that corner there. Loosen that off a bit. Just give yourself a little bit of height to the front where possible. And then you just want to tidy up what you're doing. So you could pitch the back to the ground and obviously those sides over there, you could pitch very, very close to the ground. And that gives you a lot of protection from the back and also you know the front and the front's raised up here and here for you know a little bit of height you can just about get in here i mean it's definitely you know tight but you can get in here bearing in mind obviously the front is not you know too right to the ground but if you had your waterproof bivy or even just your regular bivy the MLD Superlight Bivy, so not the waterproof one and not the bug bivy, but the Superlight Bivy with that momentum type of black breathable material on the top. I did notice that that is quite water resistant because the first day that I was here, rain was blowing in a little bit and that material did get quite damp now luckily it wasn't a prolonged rain it was just you know an hour or so but it just beaded on the top and you know and rolled off so it really wasn't you know a big you know it really wasn't a major problem now like i said obviously pitched like this the back is very very close to the ground and as i say it's kind of one of those things where if you're in a wood or a forest you wouldn't need the back pitched quite so low because you know the very the very trees and everything would protect you 
And as I keep saying, don't forget, if you use a longer line, there's a lot of stones in this area. If you use a, a longer line, it does help just raise it off the ground a little bit. And the other thing that you could do, you know, if you had really bad weather coming in and you literally had just a minimal tap like this to protect you, if you roll up your pack, if your pack is a frameless pack, or if you've got something that you're not going to be using, maybe a pair of shoes or something like that, you could put your pack or your shoes or maybe a dog's rucksack or something like that right at the back here and that would also raise it off the ground a little bit and that would give you a little bit more height inside where your foot end where your feet go you don't need much height where your feet go that would give you a bit more height where your feet go plus give you protection from any wind or or rain and as i say if it's only splashing rain that's coming in at you 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 know you'd probably be okay but let's say let's say that it's really bad weather that's probably low enough to the ground there literally all you need to do is lower your your line to your central pole get this grass stuff out of the way lower that down there actually what you'd be better off doing in fact if you do it like that you're going to be you you could you could you could do it like that obviously just tighten things up again you know you know, use your common sense here a little bit pulling that line up and then putting that one in so that's low to the ground there and then if we come around this side here okay well that's not a great i probably wouldn't leave it there because it's not very secure and i don't want to bend the pole if there's a rock there just, this is just to show you so of course the other thing that you could do is you could get the front pegged very close to the ground there and there so obviously the closer in you get it the higher you're going to get it so i've got it pegged there and there you could maybe peg it a little bit closer if you wanted to but that gets your front in quite close and then obviously i've just left these two pegs here you know to keep that side down you probably don't need that one you you know you could use two one you know the option is endless there then obviously at the back we've got the long line there and then what i've done is i've put one well actually two lines joined up so when you've got a tap always take three or four good pieces of cordage with you learn how to do these knots here that are secure but you can adjust them the length of here so just learn how to do those i get a bit confused sometimes but i eventually get there obviously know how to do a basic knot there just to tie two pieces together and then if you run that through there like that that raises up the ridge line one stops it hanging in on you but two of course just gives you you know a tiny bit more room inside now obviously to get in here it's definitely a lot more difficult you're definitely you know a lot <laughs> a lot closer to the ground and if you do have condensation obviously your body will be wiping it off for sure but with this pitch this is not a bad pitch to be honest obviously your headroom is very very limited but you would have you know pretty good protection in in here like i said you may want to pitch the edges you know closer to the ground if rain was getting to you underneath but the advantage of this is you've got you know some headroom at the front 
with the edges quite close to the ground. So you would be limited to what you could do at the front, but because the back is flat to the ground, you kind of have <laughs> indirectly plenty of storage room down there. You know, so if you had a dog or something like that, you could get a dog down in the corner down there somewhere. You know, this is like a, a real storm protecting tap configuration like this. I'm not saying it's the best or the most convenient tap pitch, but if you had a real storm coming through, you'd probably be reasonably well, you know, protected like this. I don't know about a gale force storm or anything, obviously, but uh, like I said, you know, this is certainly another pitching option for you if you had really inclement weather on an open, <laughs> on an open moor. Like I said, just be prepared that you will quite literally ooh, have to crawl out of it because you know like I said it's not the it's not the easiest of pitches to get into and out of it's just to illustrate another option for you and obviously you could do a traditional A-frame you know with the with the back raised up more I tend to show this type moor, because where I camp in the middle of a moor, <laughs> we don't have the luxury of forests, you know, when things like that to offer protection from the wind. So I kind of always got mine in, in wind, <laughs> in wind mode. So there's just a couple of pictures of the, of the, monk tap there for you and you can do various pitches you know around that so it is certainly you know a very very versatile shelter and you can pitch it any which way that you wish to pitch really i hope you enjoyed this fun little video on various pitches of the mld monk tap Please do like, subscribe, share, hit that notification button to all. And if you got this far in the video, I'm sure you must have enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.